Welcome to Bellingham, Washington for the 2023 Men's Basketball Championships here in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Sean Wally once again alongside Robert Lowry. Ten games in three days. Are you ready? of Seattle Pacific University. And the score in that contest was 79 to 69. But then in Nampa on the 28th of January, about a month later, it was Northwest Nazarene winning 78 to 62. So again, it's going to be the rubber game between these two teams in the series today to see who advances to tomorrow's semifinals. Seattle Pacific in at 12 and 6 for the conference record, 17 and 10 overall. Northwest Nazarene, an even 500 in conference, 9 and 9, 12 and 14 overall on the season. Northwest Nazarene, it goes to show you how important every single game is because their final weekend, they could have been as high as fourth or sixth based on how they played in that final weekend and losing to St. Martin's and Lacey. So now they are sixth instead of fourth. Well, it, the Falcons, uh, 11th trip to the finals this year. This is the most uh, among any of the six participating teams in the tournament. Both these teams uh, have had a little bit of up and down seasons. Uh, the Falcons actually at one point had seven straight wins, including over both the number one and number two seeds coming into this year's tournament. A 92-87 win over St. Martin's and a 72-59 win over Montana State Billings. Last year, the Falcons went 14 and 13, so this year, a little bit of improvement on that record. And uh, they played some really strong basketball, as I mentioned, with those wins against the number one and number two seeds. Now, Northwest Nazarene, they went on a five uh, game, six in six games win streak in the, the latter stages of January to the early stages of February. So the team seems to be Northwest Nazarene actually peaking at the right time as they come into the tournament on a little bit of a, of a winning scheme overall. Last year they were 12 and nine, so they matched that total this year in wins, but they're 12 and 14 this year, nine and nine in conference and in sixth place overall. And I think the coaching matchup is interesting because both these coaches have basically mirrored themselves in terms of years of service in the GNAC, leading the Falcons on floor. Grant Leap in his seventh year at Seattle Pacific, 114 victories and 70 defeats. Matter of fact, he topped the uh, century mark and wins this year in a win against Douglas on uh, November 22nd. They beat Douglas, a, a team out of Canada, 114 to 63 for Grant's 100th victory. He is, of course, a former player at the University of Washington in his now seventh year. He was the 2020 GNAC Coach of the Year. Paul Rush is in now his eighth year at Northwest Nazarene, 85 and 61 overall in his time there at NNU. And while he's coaching at the Division II level, there's one thing I'm a little envious of Paul Rush because he's got a D1 beard. You'll see him on camera tonight. I'll tell you one thing, that is a D1 beard, and that might be an NBA beard. 
It really is. It's almost as good as yours. Speaking of Coach Rush, what do you think his message is to his Nighthawks? They come in stumbling slightly. They've lost two straight yeah. in the final weekend of the regular season. Conversely, SPU's won three in a row. So does it matter who's hot right now? Again, I think you can discount a little bit the last weekend of the season uh, because pretty much by that point, uh, even though it was important, it wasn't imperative in order to get in to the tournament. I think you can discount that a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, I like that five, five and six win streak right there when it, the playoff situation was still in doubt for Northwest Nazarene, and they were able to put that together at a time that I think they really needed to. So I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure you're going to focus on the last weekend. I think you're going to. I don't think you're going to focus on the negative. I think you're going to focus on the positive. I think as a coach, you're going to want to enforce what they did then and not look back on what they've done in the last couple of games. As far as Seattle Pacific is concerned, uh, same story for the Falcons right now. Uh, you want to focus on the positive, what you've done well. And again, I think you're going to want to, if you are going to be uh, putting me in the shoes of Grant Leap, I think you're going to want to take a look at that first game that you played against Northwest Nazarene at home when you won by 10 points and you out-rebounded Northwest Nazarene by a 40 to 27 margin there. I think that's going to be important today. When you look at the keys to the game, Northwest Nazarene has one of the toughest defenses in the GNAC. They are number one in points allowed overall. They're only giving up 66.4 points per game. That is very important. Seattle Pacific, on the other hand, is a team that shoots the ball extremely well. 50.7 points, 50.7% uh, 50 from the field as a team. 50% from the field as a team. That means from one to the end of the bench, everybody together shooting better than 50% combined. That is almost unheard of, even at the NBA level. Teams don't shoot 50% combined as a team. They're also tops in three-point accuracy. They're tops in free throw accuracy as well. So you've got two interesting styles. You've got a great shooting team against a great defensive team in Northwest and Nazarene. That is gonna be the tail of the tape today. Who executes the best? Does Seattle Pacific shoot well? Does Northwest Nazarene defend well? The winner of that is going to be the one that advances to the semis tomorrow without question. March Madness getting started here in Bellingham in just a few moments. And Rob, this is, man, it's win or go home. You don't have a tomorrow if you lose any of these games. You get one and done. If you lose, you're gone. Yeah, exactly. The, they really say it, it, it's a second season, and it is indeed just that. It is absolutely a second season. And again, this is a season where, as you pointed out correctly, it's, it's, one, and go, it's one and go home. So really, there's nothing to hold back at, especially in a quarterfinal matchup like this, because you got in, now you get to play for a potential GNAC championship potentially moving on to the NCAA West region. You don't have to necessarily win to do that if you're the number one and number two seeds necessarily. But these teams out here today, they know they've got to go on a three game winning streak. And if they were able to do that, they're going to be able to help uh, at least, if maybe not be the only team out of the great Northwest Athletic Conference that goes on to the NCAA West regionals. That's the voice of Robert Lowry. I'm yep. Sean Wally. We will take you all the way to the GNAC Championships on Saturday night. Game number one, Seattle Pacific and Northwest Nazarene up next. We'll get you to the National Anthems, which there will be USA and Canada, since Simon Fraser is here in this tournament. And then the starting lineups from public address announcer Jeff Evans, right here on GNAC.TV. By GNAC, Assistant Commissioner for Communications, Blake Tim.
Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Now, let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. First, for the designated visitors from Nampa, Idaho, the Northwest Nazarene Nighthawks. The starting five is announced by head coach Paul Rush, assistant coaches John Hawkins, Tanner Krause, Adam Bowles. A 6'4", sophomore guard wearing number zero, Biggie Bergerson. A 6'2", redshirt senior from Meridian, Idaho, number one, Kobe Terashima. A six-foot sophomore guard wearing number three, True Allen. A six-six redshirt sophomore forward, number 10, Christian Rose. And a six-nine redshirt junior forward from Tracy, California, number 32, Gabriel Murphy. Fans, those are your NNU Nighthawks. And now for the designated home team, the number three seed, Seattle Pacific Falcons. The starting five is announced by head coach Grant Leap. Assistant coaches, Kefri Fazio, David Choi, and George Parker. Welcome to the court, a 6'4 sophomore guard, number one, Zach Paulson. A 6'1 sophomore guard from Sammamish, number two, Sion Blackman. A 5'10 sophomore guard from Seattle, number 10, Maui Z. A 6'6 junior forward, number 24, from Kelso, Shaw Anderson. And a 6'9", sophomore forward from Portland, Oregon, number 33, Kelton Samar. Fans, those are your SPU Falcons. Officials for today's first game, Matt Mason, Derek Drake, and Justin Sapien. The GM must inform the players that the game is We are set for game number one here in the GNAC Basketball Championships. Sean Wally alongside Robert Lowry as we get set for Northwest Nazarene and Seattle Pacific, the 6-3 matchup to start the tournament. And a number of GNAC All-Stars out here on the court, Sean. Northwest Nazarene starting Gabriel Murphy. He's a second team all GNAC selection. He'll be in the center jump circle here momentarily. And True Allen in the backcourt, a GNAC honorable mention selection this year as well. Seattle Pacific has Shaw Anderson, first team all GNAC on, on the floor. He's the leading scorer in the conference coming in at 19.8 points per game. Zach Paulson, GNAC honorable mention also in the starting lineup today for Seattle Pacific. Murphy and some more to jump it up and get the GNAC championships underway. Seattle Pacific wins the tip. Two 20 minute halves in men's college basketball. Game number one, game two, three, and four. Tough follow. Ball nearly stolen away. Seattle Pacific recovers. Terashima in the lane. First bucket is a three-pointer by Zach Paulson. As Paulson and Anderson go, so go the Falcons. Well, Paulson that time just got a nice spot up, got a great pass, and got an easy three-point shot in rhythm. 
And speaking about a three-pointer in rhythm, <laughs> Bergeson answers. Biggie indeed answers. We are tied at three. One minute gone by here in Bellingham inside Carver Gym on Lee Q Court. Ten basketball games in three days. You know, Robert, the teams have it easy. If they win here on out, they only have three games. We have ten. And it looks like this is going to be a three-point shooting contest for Seattle Pacific and Northwest Nazarene, uh, the way they start off, which will favor the Falcons if that is the case. Tarashima goes inside. Murphy triple teamed, ball loose. Shaw Anderson and the white headband heading the other way. Outside, another three-pointer is perfect. Kelton some more, it's 6-3 Falcons. Well again, the Falcons 39.3% on threes this year as a team. Northwest Nazarene looking to answer. Drew Allen, cross court, and that is out of bounds, overthrown. Terashima couldn't track the pass. Allen was the GNAC freshman of the year last year. There's that three you talked about by Seattle Pacific. Great graphics and replay here in Bellingham for your viewing pleasure on GNAC.TV. Thank you for tuning in on this Thursday afternoon, 1742, and another three-pointer. Three three-pointers for the Falcons. Anderson chimes in. It is 9-3 SPU. Shaw Anderson, 41% on threes this year. Biggie, the right-hand dribble in the lane. Lays it up and in, 9-5 the count, 17-20 left. Ferguson out of Boise stayed right home to play his college basketball just up the road at Nampa. He has all five points for the Nighthawks. Zach Paulson drains another three. He has six already, 12-5 Falcons. Well, uh, uh, Seattle Pacific shooting a fantastic pace. And with Northwest Nazarene is actually doing, I think, a pretty nice job defending the basketball. Allen goes baseline, his shot rejected. Anderson the rejection, a little bit of a shove there, no foul called. SPU resets. 16.35 remaining, first half here in Bellingham, Washington. Eight to shoot. And a foul is called on the Nighthawks. Well, that time uh, it was basically Anderson. And you can see there's the three just a moment ago by Seattle Pacific's Anderson. And well, no, no, no question that he was deserving of first team GNAC all conference honors after his season. He averages, though. 34.8 minutes played per game. He leads the league, he leads the conference in that regard. Seven point lead for the Falcons. They've hit nothing but threes and there is yet another. Shaw Anderson now has six points himself. 15-5, Falcons by 10. Well, Anderson, 19.8, 85% free throw shooter this year, leading the conference and our number six in the conference in that regard. And playing pretty good defense there. But sometimes good offense is able to defeat good defense, and that's what you saw there. Christian Rose, the bucket. Seattle Pacific wanted a travel. They did not get it. 15-7 the score, 15-40 left in the first half. Seattle Pacific has shot nothing, made nothing but three-pointers so far. They're inside the arc right now. They kick it outside to Paulson. Paulson driving baseline, five to shoot. He goes off glass and is fouled. A little bit of a late whistle there, but I think the call was a good one as there was contact made in the lane. We should mention, by the way, the officials for today's contest are Matt Mason, Darren Drake, and Justin St. Pierre. Take a look at the foul on the drive. Timeout on the floor. Free throws coming up after this on GNAC.TV. Welcome to NNU. For over 100 years, we've had one goal. Make the world a 
better place. It's all happening here, the Boise Valley, and we're smack in the middle of it. Challenging programs? We've got a hundred of them. How does an average class size of 17 sound? Professors who actually care? We're talking a 15 to 1 ratio. Trust us, they care. We're NNU. Here for you. Here for good. Back here in Bellingham as you take a look at one of many three-pointers Seattle Pacific has drained here in the first half. Yeah, Seattle Pacific, five of six on threes right now, 83% on, on threes. My, oh my. And that's the kind of start that I, I know Grant Leap wanted as the Falcons have this 15.7 lead with free throws right now to come. Zach Paulson at the line for the Falcons. The 6'4 sophomore, sophomore at a university place, Washington, right next to Tacoma. You don't want a great defensive team to establish that great defense to begin the game. But then that rim becomes the size of about a golf, a golf cup uh, instead of a regular size basket. 10 point lead for the Falcons, 15-13 to play, first half. Harvey throws it away, SPU comes away with it. I've been impressed, the Falcons have been putting up pretty good defense on their defensive end. Anderson, outside. Evans, right hand dribble, right side of the lane. Spins to the middle, shot off back iron. Back come the Nighthawks, down 10. Stepping on the baseline is Tereshima. It'll be Falcon basketball, 14-42 left first half. And Tereshima was under some defensive pressure there, but he just missed the, the baseline there for a costly turnover when you're down by 10. Nice job on defense by the Nighthawks. They get the knockdown by Farron and come away with the turnover. Biggie, a very long three, and he's feeling it. 17-10 yeah. Falcons. Ferguson with an NBA range three and beyond, a matter of fact, for that three on the wing. Evans, one dribble, hands off. Paulson goes back out top. Baseline drive and a blocking foul called on the Nighthawks. Seattle Pacific and Sion Blackman will head to the line. And here is the drive by Blackman. Boy, that was one of those bang, bang plays. Could have been a charge, could have been a, could have been a uh, block, and the official called the block there, and I'm not sure that was the wrong call. I'm not saying that, but uh, Blackman with a strong penetration move. Blackman cannot hit the free throw. 19-10 Falcons lead, 13-52 left first half. The pace is slow just a little bit, and I'm not surprised by that because we were at a frenetic pace to begin the first six minutes of this game. Nighthawks looking down low. Farron hits the court, turnover, no foul called. Falcons with the ball up nine, Blackman to Anderson. They haven't shot a three in at least a minute. Yeah, something must be wrong. Anderson hears you, he fires. Just their second miss from three. Harvey, left hand dribble, free throw line jumper. Rims out, rebound to the Falcons. Z, the point guard, gonna slow it down a little bit here after he got some instructions from his coach yelling across the floor at him. Blackman in front of the NNU bench. Outside is Evans for three. 
I'll tell you, he had a great, great look there. He had time to set his feet, drew a bead, but just couldn't get it to go down. The floater from Terashima off back rim. Falcons slow it down and get instructions from head coach Grant Lee. Z gets it right back from Paulson. Z off the screen. Evans underneath the hoop, he is fouled, and Trace Evans will head to the line. All of a sudden, foul is starting to mount up at just a bit for Northwest Nazarene. That's their fourth. You can see here is the drive and dish by Z, and the foul called on the inside. That's the fourth on the Nighthawks, and right now to this point, not one single team foul on the Falcons. It's not something you see every day. No fouls nearly eight minutes in. Well, and don't forget, this is a pretty good free throw shooting team, the Falcons. 77% as a team. That also leads the GNAC this past season. Evans misses the free throw. 10 point lead for the Falcons. And then you trying to find some offense. Harvey under the basket, circles back outside. Inside 12 minutes left, first half. Double team by the Falcons and a foul is called on Seattle Pacific. That foul will be assessed to Trace Evans. Timeout on the floor, 11.57 left. Falcons by 10, back after this on GNAC.TV. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity. On my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. Back here in Bellingham, Washington, Sean Wally, Robert Lowry, as you take a look at one of the many three-pointers yeah. early on by Seattle Pacific. Shaw Anderson with the long-range three there. Seattle Pacific, five of eight on threes to this point. Yeah, and let's not take anything away from Northwest Nazarene. They have hit two as well and not missed uh, Kobe Terishima, who on the year is a tremendous three-point shooter, and uh, Ryan Bergeson, who has hit a couple of threes. And look, there's a steal on the inbounds. Seattle Pacific stealing the inbounds. Great defense and awareness by Clayton Whitman. He gets it ahead to Blackman for the easy bucket. 22-10, Falcons up early. You can hear the chant of defense from the SPU bench. Fox, the baseline drive, it won't go. He actually shot that from behind the backboard with his left hand. That was impressive to get the shot away. Rouse overthrows his teammate intended for Elsner. That'll be a turnover to the Nighthawks. 11-18 left here in half number one. Well, Northwest Nazarene, as we mentioned, the number one. In, and True Allen, the second time he's had a little miscommunication with the teammate and thrown the ball away. Northwest Nazarene, a bit of a struggle here in the first half. You think a noon start time has a little bit to do with that? They're not used to playing games this early. I've talked to coaches who say that, you know, we can only control what we can control, and I guess that's what Paul Rush has to think at this point. Rouse the miss, but the offensive rebound for SPU. Rouse another shot, this time for three, and of course it goes in for the Falcons, 25-10. 
Well, if a team is hot as the Pacific, you can't give them second chance opportunities. So Northwest Nazarene can have to do a little better job on the glass. Murphy, little left hand jump hook off glass. And hey, it's Thursday afternoon. So of course the bank is open. Murphy, good offensive player, 11 and a half points a game, leading the GNAC and rebounding this year at 8.8 .8 rebounds per contest. 10-17 left, first half. 25-12, Falcons. Rouse, top of the key. Guarded by Z. Rouse, hands off to Samore. Samore, quickly double teamed, and a charge is called as he drives the right side of the lane. Well, Northwest Nazarene did a nice job there, as you'll be able to see. Here's the drive, here comes the help de side defense, and Again, the charge outside the restricted area there, turnover back over to NNU. Great job taking the charge. Tim Tenclay for the Nighthawks. Halfway through our first half of basketball. Tenclay actually from the Olympia area. He played at North Thurston High. I know that school well. Ten to shoot for the Nighthawks. They trail 25-12. Make that 25-15 as Ten Clay doing good things for the Nighthawks. Ten point lead for SPU. Wow. A violation on the inbounds. The inbounder Stepping for the Seattle line. Pacific, uh, Clayton Whitman, I believe. Uh, he stepped over the line before he made the pass in. That is, that's... Uh, that's a mental error. Shaw Anderson and Zach Paulson return for the Falcons. Whitman and Rouse to the bench. Oh, I'm sorry, Rouse is still out there. That was Blackman to the bench. And another apparently mental error is for the second time in this first half, a Northwest Nazarene player steps on the, well, out of bounds barrier, once on the baseline, now in the side court, turn over to the Falcons. On the court right now, two guys that played against each other in high school, Rouse for SPU with the Timberline, 10 Clay, we mentioned North Thurston, those bitter rivals in the South Sound. Falcons up 10, and we have traveling on the Falcons. A little bit of sloppy ball here in the last minute. Well, you can't, when you're up, as the Falcons are, you can't start making those mental errors and allowing your opponent to climb back into this one. And that's what Northwest Nazarene is trying to do right here. And there was a, a silly foul on the Paulson who made contact on the outside on the shot by, I think it was Terashima. Ten clay. No, actually it was ten clay on the outside, and you can see right here, watch, here's the shot and the, kind of the side swipe as he went by. That shot was gonna be off, and now instead you have three opportunities at the free throw line. You don't see it too often. Ten clay fouled shooting the three, so he will get three shots. I'll be honest, both of these teams are playing very aggressive defense and physical defense against their opponents here today. Z returns for the Falcons. Elsner to give them a little the more stability, I think, right now. Maybe settle them down just a little bit offensively. They are crawling back in this one. They were down double digits, and they're down eight. Ten There's misses. hustle. The final free throw gets the rebound. A three on the way by Allen. That is missed. That's a big missed opportunity by Northwest Nazarene there. They could have cut the lead right in half on that shot. 25-17, Falcons in the lead. Zach Paulson looking down low. That ball stolen by Allen. Back come the Nighthawks. Ball poked away by the Falcons, so it will stay with the Nighthawks. Well, this is what uh, you can see here. Here is the pass inside, stolen away by Allen. D doing a great job to duck down inside and intercept that pass. 
Allen off the screen. Outside, a foul is called away from the basketball. See how Pacific Bench thought there was a travel on the drive, but I think what happened was the foul was called before. There's Allen with the penetration into the paint, and then the foul called before the drive occurred. You, a good look at the foul underneath on S'more. So Clayton S'more with the foul. Allen to inbound for the Nighthawks. He gets it right back. Cross court to 10 Clay. 10 Clay wanted a foul, looked like he was pushed. No foul called. Terashima kicks it outside. 10 Clay open for another yep. three, and that is perfect. 25 20. 10 Clay having himself an afternoon. He has eight points. When you saw him catch it, he was right in perfect rhythm, and you knew that shot was going down when it left his hand. Nighthawks within five. They have definitely up to their effort level as there's some nice passing and Trace Evans alone under the basket. Seven point lead for the Falcons. Well, Z did a nice job there to find the open man for the easy bucket. Seattle Pacific needed that. Shot in the lane, missed. Ball out of bounds, last touch by the Falcons. Yeah, it was going out of bounds and I think it went off. Well, it went off the leg of one of the Seattle Pacific University players. Otherwise, it would have been going Seattle Pacific, Pacific's way. 7.30 left here in the first half. Timeout on the floor. Falcons 27, Nighthawks 20. Back after this on GNAC.TV. Back inside, Carver, Jim, Sean Wally, Rob Lowry. The GNAC Basketball Championships brought to you by Under Armour. Thank you for tuning in on this Thursday afternoon. Game number one, SPU and NNU, 27-20 Falcons. Well, it was only uh, three minutes and 25 seconds ago on, on the play clock, or on the game clock, I should say, that it was Seattle Pacific 25 and NNU 10. The score now, 27-20. A 10-2 run during that time by Northwest Nazarene University, and I was just eavesdropping on the Seattle Pacific bench during that last time out, and I heard Grant Leap say uh, exactly what I told his players. The only reason they got back in this is because we are not taking care of the basketball. Turnovers, eight to six right now but the eight belong to Northwest Nazarene, six for the Falcons, but those six have come in the last couple of minutes, and that's the reason this game has tightened up significantly. And that's exactly right. Great observation by Grant Leap. Play's gotten a little sloppy on both sides lately. Terashima trapped in the corner. Biggie back in the ball game for the Nighthawks. Three to shoot, he loses the ball. Paulson gets ran into, hits the deck, and a foul is called on Biggie. Well, Bergeson making a drive right down the lane. Seattle Pacific cuts him off. Collision occurred there, occurred, and well, the turnover gives it back to Seattle Pacific. That ball poked away by Gabriel Murphy. 
it'll be Falcon basketball. Well, so I tell you, Murphy coming way out to, to guard Trace Evans, and the big fella is setting up about 16 feet away from the from away from the bucket there. Paulson to inbound for the Falcons, maybe, and he does get it in. Anderson, strong drive, center of the lane, looks to pack it, gets it to go, 29-20 Falcons. Genac first teamer, leading scorer in the conference this year, and you saw part of the reason why. He can shoot it, and he can drive too. Biggie gets it to True Allen. Allen to Murphy. Allen gets it back in the lane. Seven to shoot. A very high arcing three rattles home for Kobe Terashima. Uh, he got his feet under him and got the shot off. And that's what it is. If you're going to be a good three-point shooter, if you can set yourself in rhythm like he did, you're going to be able to knock it down. What a spin move in the lane by Trace Evans, but he can't finish. Yeah, and there's Murphy to pull the rebound, and that's why he's the leading rebounder this year in the conference. Third time in the first half that Northwest Nazarene has stepped on the sideline. Look right here. Here's the penetration for the three-point shot just a moment ago that we talked about. But again, Northwest Nazarene's turned it over three times in the first half, stepping on the sideline or the... Uh, the end line. Zach Paulson with it for the Falcons. 15 to shoot. Z driving in the lane, stops the floater off the square of the backboard, 31-23. I thought he was going to try to just float that in, but he was smart to use the glass. Harvey around the screen, in the lane, kicks it outside to Biggie. Now Terashima. Terashima almost lost it. Harvey, jumper off the back iron. Paulson the rebounds. Anderson and Paulson both sporting the white headbands. We've got to get you one, Rob. Yeah. That's the ticket. Five minutes left in the first half of basketball here inside Carver. Jim, a nice dish in the lane. Trace Evans makes that one. It's back to a 10-point lead. Well, Seattle Pacific doing a little better job taking care of the basketball. Terashima in front of the Falcon bench. Nice bounce pass in the lane. The foul, Christian Rose cannot convert, but he will head to the line. Yeah, hit on the arm. There's no question about that foul whatsoever. Here's the drive by Z. Draw dish. And the bucket just a moment ago by the big fell on the inside for Seattle Pacific. Rose hits the first free throw. The 6'6 redshirt sophomore out of San Diego, California. Man, it'd be nice to be in San Diego right now, wouldn't it? Well, they, it's... For the sunshine. Uh, oh, yeah, without question. Big windstorm overnight here in the Bellingham area where uh, the tournament's being held this year, but things have turned nice. The weather's cool but nice out on the outside now. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing daylight through the gym here. It's kind of nice. You know, most basketball games are in the evening as we will be later on tonight and tomorrow and Saturday. 4.25 left, first half, 33-24 SPU. Should mention that the second men's game coming up here today will feature the 4-5 matchup between Western Oregon and Central Washington's men. As you say that, Central Washington has walked in the building and they are behind us. And the stands here at Carver Gym, nine to shoot for SPU. They're up by nine, and they want three more. They won't get it. A battle for the basketball, and a foul is called on the Falcons. Z had a pretty good look at a three there, and then a rebound scramble. There's the three. There's the long rebound, and, well, a couple players going hard after it, and some more 
Picks up the foul for Seattle Pacific in the rebound scramble. There's a good look as Gabriel Murphy as he came into your picture right there. Murphy and his brother Aaron, both coming from Tracy, California to play their collegiate basketball for the Nighthawks. Inside four minutes left. Half number one here in Bellingham. With Western Washington University. 10 clay with it for the Nighthawks. Harvey, a high arcing floater, gets the shooter's roll. Their basket's gonna count, but then there's a rebounding foul on the inside as well against a Northwest Nazarene player. Not sure which one. Here's the drive. I thought that shot was gonna come up short, but he got a nice shooter's bounce. And then the foul underneath against Murphy. Murphy talking to one of the officials right now, trying to get an explanation, but pretty obvious. He shoved the Falcon player. 3.43 left, timeout on the floor. 33-26, Falcons back after this on GNX. Back here in Bellingham, Washington, as you take a look at Z with the floater, 33-26 Falcons. First game of the GNAC Championships brought to you by Under Armour, Sean Wally alongside Robert Lowry. 3.43 left in half number one. Free throws to come right now for uh, Seattle Pacific. Clayton Whitman, who is the man who was fouled on that rebounding situation just a moment ago. Paulson hits the first, so he earns another. Zach Paulson has eight points on the afternoon. Second free throw, good. Nine point lead for the Falcons. On paper, they are, should be the favored team, they are Third ranked in this tournament. Nighthawks come in at number six. Good strong move in the lane by Aaron Murphy. Can't get the shot to go though. Yeah, Gabriel's brother came in uh, for him during that last timeout. Z to Paulson. Paulson, strong drive, going left hand off glass, rolls down and through. Yeah, Shaw Anderson there was the man who went with the left hand. Paulson and Anderson both wearing the headbands. Nice job by Farron to get the bucket from close range. I'm not sure True Allen there. He had a nice spot to the lane, but he stopped. But hey, still got the two points by Farron. Well, it was a good. It was a good move by Farron without question. Six ten player showing some nice mobility on the outside to get into the lane. Falcons up nine with the basketball. Paulson rises for three and he is fouled and we will have another three free throws. One thing coaches hate, I think almost, almost more than anything, is fouling on a three point shot. You can see it there, Anderson. And there's no question that Murphy challenged the shot but made contact with Shaw and now Anderson will step to the free throw line. Anderson, GNAC first team, leading scorer in the conference. Yeah. 
And on the afternoon, he's now got a dozen. And he has one more free throw to come. Hoping for the Baker's dozen with this free throw. Exactly. Nobody on Northwest Nazarene in double figure points to this point. And he has 13 now. It's a 12 point lead for Seattle Pacific. 2.30 left in half number one. Nighthawks need to make a run. Anderson was the preseason player of the year for the GNAC this year, and he's living up to it here today. 10 Clay. Looking Kicks inside. Ball. Yeah, I think, oh, no, a foul called. Should mention, because this is important, both Paulson and Anderson, all academic team selections this year for the GNAC as well. A lot of incredible student athletes yes. throughout the GNAC. Floater baseline won't go for Terashima. Offensive rebound to the Nighthawks. We're inside two minutes left, first half. Another now, kick ball. There's the kick ball. In the first meeting of these two teams, Shaw Anderson had a 17.8 rebound game. And he had 18 and eight in the second. So he likes playing against NNU. I'm willing to bet he will top that point total here this afternoon. Yeah. He already has 13. Rose, working on Anderson, nowhere to go. Throws up a lefty hook, misses badly. Falcons already up 12, looking for more. 140 left, first half. Z, happy to use clock. And a foul is called on Christian Rose of Northwest Nazarene. Well, that was a little bit of a mismatch. Rose at 6'6", guarding Z on the outside in Maui, only 5'10 out of uh, Seattle. Bell he played at Bellevue College before transferring to Seattle Pacific, who always seems to have a good point guard. Seattle Pacific has had a string of great point guards, including David Downs from a number of years ago, who was, uh, I believe, tournament MVP at least once. Yeah, two-time Downs was a two-time tournament MVP of the GNAC. Minute 20 left in the first half. Nighthawks basketball, True Allen double teamed. He escapes, Jalen Fox outside to Allen. Eight to shoot for NNU. Allen, a strong drive in the wow. lane, the bump, the foul, count it. I tell you, Allen, is t he's a tough player. He's a solidly built six footer. You can see the drive right here. He knew the contact was coming. He split two defenders, went down as he got the shot off the window to drop. Foul on Clayton Whitman. Sending True Allen to the line. Allen, out of Lapway, Idaho, but he played at Clarkston High School in Washington, which is right there across from Lewiston, so right on the Idaho-Washington border. Final minute of our first half of game number one here in the GNAC tournament. Men's basketball on display this afternoon, and we'll have women's this evening. Ten to shoot for the Falcons. Anderson trying to drive. Allen is on him, and a oh. foul is called. I'll tell you one thing. That was very nearly an and one. Anderson did not get the shooter's bounce on that as the shot rolled off to the left. Allen hit with the foul, that is his first. Foul situation right now, double bonus for Seattle Pacific. And one and one time for NNU if they get any more free throw opportunities in the final 41.3. Back to a 10 point lead. Anderson now with 14 to lead all scorers. Eighty-five percent free throw shooter, sixth in the conference in the regular season. 
Anderson short <laughs> on the second free throw. Sorry, Shaw. Nighthawks could use a basket here. They want, would like to go to the locker room down single digits. Allen thought about a shot instead. He gets it back. Right side of the lane, jumper is good, 41-33, Falcons. Im important to get it under double digits if you can going into the locker room. Seattle Pacific can take a quick timeout for the final 13 and a half. Interesting spot for a timeout by Grant Leap, 41. I don't, I don't disagree with that timeout, though. Let's go ahead, take the final 13 and a half, see if we can get ourselves a good, I mean, there's plenty of time, plenty of time here. But, uh, you know, the way they started the game shooting the basketball from threes, they hit five of six to begin the game on three-point shots. You get a three-point shot here going into halftime. Boy, I tell you, that really is a dagger in Northwest Nazarene. Seattle Pacific definitely wanting to go into the locker room up 10 or maybe even 11. I, and I don't know why this is the case. I don't know why. But if you could do a psychological study, I guarantee you would prove this, this uh, truism out, that a team that goes into the locker room up by, or down, let's say, down by 10 or down by 9, the mental attitude of the team down in double digits is way different than the team down by 9. I guarantee you that's the case. It does. It seems like a lot bigger of a hole to climb out of than just one point. Final 10 seconds of the half. Paulson, the jumper from the free throw line is good. It's time. back to a 10 point lead and that is how the first 20 minutes of the GNAC Men's Basketball Championships brought to you by Under Armour will end. 43-33 SPU by 10. Your thoughts, Robert? Well, here is Paulson to Anderson. And, well, Shaw just continues his, uh, his great offensive game in the first half, and now you have a 10-point lead. And, again, Northwest Nazarene, they got down early. They battled back into single digits, uh, but Northwest Nazarene, again, saw Seattle Pacific start to pull away, and they have a 10-point lead. The two regular season games, again, uh, split between the two squads, Seattle Pacific winning at home, so, and Northwest Nazarene winning at home as well. First neutral floor meeting between the two this year. We got 20 minutes of basketball. I don't think this is over by any stretch. I think this is going to be a game that's going to be decided in the final two minutes. Halftime here in Bellingham. We'll be back with you in about 11 minutes. So grab a snack, grab some lunch, and come on back. Second half after this on GNAC.TV. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. Central is a great place to learn to make yourself better. I was worried coming here as a transfer student and as a first-gen student that I would feel a little alone or a little nervous to make friends, but the physics department has been incredible. They've all been so welcoming. They're providing me with the tools and the knowledge I need to improve myself after the education part is done. So when it comes to getting professionally certified, Central prepares us directly for that.
Back here in Bellingham, Sean Wally with Robert Lowry. Thanks for tuning in on this Thursday afternoon as we get set to take a look at some highlights from the first half. Seattle Pacific, a 10-point lead over Northwest Nazarene. Well, Northwest Nazarene just came out of the uh, out of the gates firing from threes, and you can see one right there by Shaw Anderson, who was the end. Actually, Northwest Nazarene answered with a couple of threes, rising. Bergeson knocked down a couple of shots as well, but 
Northwest Nazarene and Seattle Pacific. Uh, really leaving it all out on the floor, Sean, I would say in the first half. I don't think there was there was anybody out there who didn't give 100% in the first half. And it's going to be interesting to see the, the winner of this team, what they're going to have left in the gas tank when they advance to tomorrow's semifinal. In terms of first half scoring, Shaw Anderson leading all scorers with 16 points in the first half for Seattle Pacific. He's the only double-figure scorer in the game. Zach Paulson had eight for Seattle Pacific as well. The scoring from there, five for Trace Evans off the bench, three points for Kelton Samore, also three points for Kassan Roos for uh, Seattle Pacific University. Uh, Clayton Whitmer had a deuce, as did Maui Z. And those were the only scores for Seattle Pacific in the first half. For Northwest Nazarene, Ryzen Bergeson with eight points leading the way. True Allen had five points. Eight points as well by Timothy Tenclay. He had eight points in less than eight minutes of play in the first half. Three points for Christian Rose. Three as well for Kobe Terashima. Gabe Murphy had a couple, as did Andrew Farron. And uh, Yaru Harvey had a two as well. So that's all the scoring in the first half. Rebounding pretty even overall, 12-10. Northwest Nazarene leading the board play in the first half. Robert, it's, it's crazy that both teams are shooting so well. Northwest Nazarene shooting very well, but they're down 10. SPU just shooting better. 52% for NNU, 66 overall yeah. for Seattle Pacific. Anytime you're shooting that well, it's going to be tough to topple the Falcons when they're shooting as well as they are. 60% from three, 66 from the field. We what do you do? About leading free, uh, field goal percentage team better than 50% as a team on the season. I, I still find that stat just, just amazing. Allen able to clear the glass there on the miss by Seattle Pacific. No scoring yet here in the second half. Ten point lead for SPU. Rose, they wanted the three seconds. Did the Falcons, they don't get it. Well, they got a big mismatch on, so, well now they don't, but Z was matched up with Murphy for a moment. And there's the big guy inside. Rose the miss, Gabriel Murphy cleaning up the glass, goes up strong, he's fouled. Will go to the line for a chance at a three point play as you take a look at Murphy inside. Well, he's one of the leading offensive rebounders in the entire nation. He has been on the year, on the, on the season. Three and a half offensive rebounds per game, leading the GNAC in that category. A good start for the Nighthawks here in the second half. 43-36, Falcons in the lead. One minute gone by, second half here in Bellingham. Oh, Anderson getting loose on the baseline. He is fouled. And I'm assuming the foul is what messed up that shot. Went on top of the backboard. You don't see that often. <laughs> Unless you see me shooting. But here is, <laughs> and again, on the arm. Anderson with palms up saying looking for the foul there. It was, it was to come. And now he gets free throws. Wow, front ended. And we have a, I think we're gonna have a Murphy exchange. No, both Murphy brothers are gonna be on the floor now. So a lot of size up front for NNU at this point. Paul Rush choosing to go with his big men down low. See if that changes things in the Nighthawk favor. 44-36 after the free throws. Back come NNU. And the officials calling a little tight here to begin the second half. Some more checks out for the Falcons. Evans back in. And you can see the foul there, apparently. Murphy being bodied just a little bit too much for the foul. Murphy nowhere to go, finds True Allen for three. He has eight points on the afternoon, and this Nighthawks is, feeling good after halftime. This is as close as it's been since he uh, 
latter stages of the first half. A three to answer out of the corner by Blackman. Will not go. Offensive rebound by the Falcons. Murphy Evans. can't believe he didn't get that defensive rebound. Just bounced off his hand. Z with a nice high arcing jumper. 46-39 SPU. Inside two minutes gone by. Second half. Win or go home here in the GNAC Championships brought to you by Under Armour. That floater by Biggie, not even close. I don't know if Bergeson thought he got fouled because that was a, just a pure and simple air ball. Paulson outside. Trace Evans finds Blackman. Blackman left-hand dribble in the lane, switches to the right hand, shot short off the rim. That was a nice penetration and using the other hand. Allen, the lefty, that three-pointer, no. Gabriel Murphy, the rebound. Allen to the other Murphy, to Biggie. In the corner, it's Tereshima oh, baseline. Man. What a floater. That's an NBA move right there because he froze a defender. He didn't really l launch, Hesitation. didn't really lift up. He just gave it a little shovel and uh, caught the defender entirely off guard. Five-point lead for the Falcons. They have the basketball. Evans, hands off, and a foul is called on the screen. That foul will be on Aaron Murphy. Now watch here. Whoop, again, just a, a, a little lift. It just a floater on the baseline. I remember that is an NBA move, and it defeats shot blockers every time. Z has it for the Falcons to Zach Paulson. Nine to shoot. Z off the screen. Good defense by Allen. The jumper from Z hits iron and lands in the hands of Gabriel Murphy. Tereshima tries to split the defenders, loses the basketball. It's loose on the court. Ball finally out of bounds. Last touch by Seattle Pacific. Well, nobody was able to get true possession of the basketball, no pun intended, True Allen's name there. But uh, you can see the ball loose. Nobody has possession, still loose. And it went off a Seattle Pacific. I think it went off Anderson, not sure. A little cleanup work gonna be done on the floor. You know, we were talking about shot blockers. I just mentioned that a second ago. You know what today, today is the history of? Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Today it happened. What year was that? I, I'll have to dig in, but today's the, the anniversary of that. 100 point. I, I can, can't believe 100 points by a single player in any game. Extremely amazing 100 points. Many years ago, we had 71 the other night by Dame Lillard of the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah. And here is a foul on the inside. Allen did a nice job there. He drew contact on, I think Anderson was the man. No, they're going to call it on Z. But uh, he did a nice job there trying to draw, purposely draw contact. Allen with his ninth point with that free throw. He was a freshman of the year last year, and I tell you, he's... He's even better this year. Seattle Pacific was up 15 points at one time. They're only up four right now. Off the missed free throw, Nighthawks got the offensive rebound. Ball out of bounds. Allen will inbound. Gabriel Murphy in the lane, working on Evans. Little flick of the wrist off back iron. Four minutes gone by in half number two. Four-point lead for the Falcons. Win or go home. Ball Boy, nearly stolen by Aaron Murphy, but a foul is called. Boy, that was – and we weren't in really good position to see it. It looked like he made the steal clean, but he must have bodied him. Let's see if we can get it from this side. Wow. Close call there. Nonetheless, on the floor. 
Foul goes to Aaron Murphy. 15.49 left, timeout on the floor. Falcons 46, Nighthawks 42, back after this on GNAC.TV. Welcome to NNU. For over 100 years, we've had one goal, make the world a better place. It's all happening here, the Boise Valley, and we're smack in the middle of it. Challenging programs, we've got 100 of them. How does an average class size of 17 sound? Professors who actually care? We're talking a 15 to one ratio. Trust us, they care. We're NNU, here for you, here for good. Back here in Bellingham, as you look at True Allen draining the three a moment ago. It's a four-point lead for Seattle Pacific. Sean Wally with Robert Lowry, our entire GNAC.TV crew here inside Carver Gym. Western Washington University hosting the GNAC Championships. Both teams shooting well above, well, 50% or above for the game. Northwest Nazarene now 57.7% on 15 of 26 from the field. Four to shoot for the Falcons. Will they notice? No. Looks they're like not they going will to. not. Shot clock violation on Seattle Pacific as Baker McCann wasn't aware of the shot clock winding down. Well, I'm not sure how there wasn't a charge right there as he leaned his shoulder <laughs> into the defender. Coming out of a timeout, you have to be aware of the clock situation. Important possession for NNU to take advantage of the turnover and pull within striking distance. And yeah. that time there is a charge called. Yeah. And that foul will be on Harvey. Yeah, Yeru that time just got a little bit out of control, as you can see right here. Lowered the right shoulder, and Z was the recipient of the, uh, of the charge. Yeru, 6'3", sophomore, transfer from University of Portland. Shaw Anderson, the only player in double figures so far. He has 17 to lead all scorers. Five minutes gone by in the half. Paulson drives the right side of the lane. 48-42, Falcons. And actually, he had to play through pretty strong defense there to get the ball up off the window. Allen bumped. That's Out. an impressive shot. And the bucket will count. True Allen, that was a very impressive shot because he got fouled, as you can see right here. He was going, driving down the lane, got bumped, switched hands from the left to the right, and got it up and in. That was impressive. That's one for the highlight reel from this year's tournament, without question, period. Mark that one upstairs, and we'll see it in a highlight package for sure. Got Gabe a, Murphy was able to get in and steal the offensive rebound there, but apparently he was in the lane just a little bit too quickly and actually fouled to do so. 14.40 left. 48-44, Falcons by four over the Nighthawks. Whose and season continues on to tomorrow and whose season moves on to next year. And Gabe Murphy going to have to check out now. Paulson outside. Open. Three is short by the Falcons. Whitman the miss. Back come the Nighthawks. They trail by four. Can pull within one possession, and they do. A strong drive by Harvey. And that's 
the closest this game has been. It has never been closer than two. Offensive foul on Seattle Pacific, and True Allen stayed down a moment. He's a little banged up as you take a look at the drive by Harvey. That was just an impressive drive right down the defense. And now Seattle Pacific has the opportunity to see Seattle Pacific tie or take the lead. The only tie of this game was 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah. <laughs> Is that technically a tie? Ooh. Harvey feeling it. His shot blocked. Put back by Farron won't go. And then you doing good on the boards. Biggie in the corner. No. And then you trying. Ten Clay tracks down the rebound. Another opportunity for the Nighthawks to tie it or take the lead. A third opportunity on this offensive possession for NNU. Biggie, the floater, rattles Good. home, and we are tied at 48. First wow. tie of the game. Who would have thought it? Down by 10 at the half, and seven minutes later, we are deadlocked. The chant of defense. And a charge on Seattle Pacific. Watch that. Bang, 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 bang play there. Baker McCann picks up the foul. There is Bergeson, uh, the floater on the right base that brought this game into a tie. Whatever Paul Rush said at halftime, he needs to bottle it up and use that every speech. Yeah. Well, again, Seattle Pacific started off so hot and got a big lead early, but there was so much time left. You, you had to think that a good basketball team is going to be able to get back in it, and that's exactly what NNU has done, and they're going to take the lead. Oh, nearly. Great drive by Allen, but he cannot convert. Paulson, baseline, now backs out. Shaw Anderson, they're doing a nice job keeping the ball out of his hands. He hasn't had a ton of touches here in the second half. Blackman for the lead. No, a whistle. And a rebounding foul inside against NNU. And here is the drive by Blackman. The mid on the rebounding foul push off on the inside by Bergeson. Berg is not particularly big, but he bodied up his man and apparently pushed him just a little too much. Whitman has it for the Falcons. Out top, it's Rouse. Rouse off the screen. He's double teamed. Paulson with it. Guarded by Allen. Four to shoot. And a foul is called on True Allen, and he doesn't believe it. Kelton some more, checks back in for the Falcons. And Shaw Anderson going back to the free throw line. Whitman to the bench. Terashima back in for the Nighthawks. Allen to the bench. Jalen Fox also returns for NNU. Biggie will take a seat. 12.03 left in an exciting second half. Anderson only has one point in the second half to this point. He had 16 at the half, 17 now. There's a good look at the young man. Anderson, as you mentioned, all GNAC academic, all uh, first team GNAC this year. Just a string of Seattle Pacific forwards that have really kind of just been great for years. 19 points on the afternoon for Zach Paulson. NNU down two. They will take the lead if 10 Clay hits the three, and they do. So Northwest Nazarene, 11-44, takes their first lead of the contest. 
Not a bad time to do it. 11.35 left in this one. Win or go home. NNU has found life. Rouse outside. A three on the way by Paulson. No. Rebound to the Nighthawks. That is Fox. He hands off to Terashima. Terashima gets it back between the leg dribble. Nice bounce pass to Fair, and he explodes to the rack, but it will not go. And then you wanted a foul. They don't get it. We get a jump ball call. Possession arrow to Seattle Pacific. Remember, Seattle Pacific was up 25 to 10. They were up by 15 in this game, and now they lead by trail by one. We have a timeout on the floor, and it looks like an NNU player down. We'll sort it all out after the break. NNU by one, 51-50 on GNAC.TV. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. Tim Tenclay doing good things for the Nighthawks. The three to give them their first lead of the ball game. They're up 51-50 over Seattle Pacific. 11.09 left, second half. Sean Wally, Robert Lowry, furious North first few minutes of the half. Northwest Nazarene last year, they, they, were, they were the higher rated team when they took on the University of Alaska, Anchorage, uh, Alaska Fairbanks. They lost 83-62 to Fairbanks, who went on to win the GNAC last year. I wonder if they're trying to avenge that loss. SPU wanted a foul right there. They did not get it. Back come the Nighthawks. Terashima in the lane. A little lob to Gabriel Murphy. NNU, their largest lead. They're up three. I tell you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let uh, Northwest Nazarene get this, uh, let this run go much longer. Seattle Pacific may need to take another quick timeout. Rouse, the right-hand dribble. Picks it up now. Because they're feeling it right now. They're feeling confident right now. Some more in the lane. Easy five-footer off glass. Needed bucket right there. One point lead for the Nighthawks, 10-10 to play. You can just feel the mojo of NNU rising. Three ball on the way, that barely touched the net. It was so perfect by Harvey. Well, and he shot that with a lot of confidence. He knew that shot was going in. Anderson guarded by Tanclay. Rouse fires up a three. Quick release. That's one of those shots where the coach goes, no, 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 thanks. Good. Every shot's good when it goes through the net. I don't think that was the offense that Grant Leap wanted right then, but boy, I tell you, it couldn't have come in at a better time. One point lead for the Nighthawks. Murphy on the left block. Spins baseline. Left hand hook is good. <laughs> and then you, what a resurgence here in the second half. You can feel it. You can feel the confidence, and when you have the confidence rising among your team, you can take a shot like that. It's a nice shot by Murphy, but I don't think that was the shot he intended. Anderson, triple team. Look at that. Somebody's got to be open. Anderson gets it back, and a foul is called on Tenclay. I want to get back to that thought I was making a minute ago about the loss to Alaska Fairbanks. Here is Murphy. He was looking to pass. You can see right there, looking for a teammate. He said, nope, I'm going to go to the left-hander, and he drops it down. Alaska Fairbanks was the 10th seed last year, and they went on that magical run. Abdul Muhammad 
Went on a 32.10 rebound game last year to knock off Northwest Nazarene. I think that really shocked NNU with a higher seeded team. Uh, I, and this year, they've come in and they've certainly shown a fire in this contest. Last year as well, speaking of Alaska teams, it was Alaska Anchorage beating Seattle Pacific 88-75 in the quarters. So both these teams are looking to get back into the win column here in the tournament and advance to the semis this year after difficult losses last year. Last year, of course, all 10 GNAC teams made the tournament. Yeah. First time that that was the case. And maybe the only time. And Should again, the, the, the COVID situation necessitated that. It was a great call by the conference last year to let all 10 teams in, and Alaska Fairbanks went on that magical run all the way to the West Region Championship game. And Western Oregon did well as a low seed as well. Western Oregon would have been the story last year of the tournament had it not been for Fairbanks. Look at that. That was a great shot, a great shot by Bergeson and a great cleanup by Murphy inside. And look at now, again, NNU up by three. Can SPU answer? 15 on the shot clock. Zach Paulson, his three is short. Rebound to Allen. I may be reading too much into this, but Seattle Pacific looks like they're shooting with a little bit of desperation and NNU with confidence. Absolutely. I think right now confidence is definitely key. It's always a good thing to have. A three from the top is short into the hands of Seattle Pacific. Rouse the rebounds. Ahead to Paulson, driving strongly on the baseline. Shot too strong. Grant Leap wanted a foul, didn't get it. But a three out of the corner from Zach Paulson. And just like that, we're tied at 60. Yeah, that was Anderson who drove the baseline, missed it, and got it out to the other headband. It's Paulson who put down the three from the left hand corner. Here's Anderson on the drive, went with the opposite hand, missed it, managed to corral the old, his own rebound and get it out to Paulson for the three. Back after the timeout on GNAC.TV. A look at the Seattle Pacific huddle as they finish up the timeout. We're all tied at 60. Sean Wally, Robert Lowry with you. Thank you for tuning in on GNAC.TV on this Thursday afternoon. What do you do if you're Seattle Pacific to cool off NNU? Boy, sometimes you run into a buzzsaw and there's not much you can do. You need to take it possession by possession. You need to try to cool them down one possession at a time. Also, and I haven't made much note of this, but both teams have a player, Christian Rose for Seattle Pacific, and uh, Kelton, Sim or I should say Kelton Samore for Seattle Pacific, and Christian Rose for NNU, both with four fouls. Allen's three, I believe, slightly blocked, and that's why it was so short. Okay, there's one possession. Now you start to cool them down one possession at a time if you can. Good defense by Allen. Paulson to Z. Z guarded by Allen. Now Z double teamed in the corner. Throws it cross court. Blackman to the rack. He is fouled oh. and he'll go to the line. A great and powerful double team with Gabriel Murphy and NNU coming out. And you can see right here. Boy, I tell you, Z did a great job to see anybody in uh, Blackman 
very nearly had an and one there, just not a very kind rim. Another timeout on the floor, exactly seven minutes remaining in one of these teams' season. First game of the GNAC men's basketball tournament here in Bellingham on GNAC.tv. Welcome back inside Carver Gym. Game one of the men's basketball tournament here in the GNAC. Thank you for tuning in on GNAC.TV. Brought to you by Under Armour. Seattle Pacific, NNU, all tied at 60. Seven minutes remaining. Sean Wally alongside Robert Lowry and Blackman misses the free throw. Coaches always say that when you miss free throws short like he did right there, it's because you have tired legs. I wouldn't be surprised by that because Blackman has been playing very hard today. Second free throw good. Seattle Pacific back in the lead. They've led by as many as 15. Can the Nighthawks retake the lead? Allen to Murphy. They swing it to Tereshima, seven to shoot. Tereshima to Murphy, four to shoot. Murphy spins, baseline oh. hook, what a beauty. That was like a shot he hit earlier, but that one he shot with a lot of confidence. He was also at about another four feet from the first one. That was about a 12-foot hook. Z picks up the dribble, finds Evans. Right back to Z. Z baseline, nowhere to go, looking for Evans. Bad pass, right to 10 Clay. Well, he's surprised with the pass right there as he was looking for Evans, and Evans wasn't expecting the pass. 10 Clay, a high arcing three, short. And then you up one. Seattle Pacific wants the lead back, the miss by Paulson. Allen slows things up for the Nighthawks. I think this is smart. You don't want to get up and down right now. You need a good shot, either team for that matter, rather than a quick one. Nice bounce pass to Murphy, the jumper from the left elbow. He's dangerous if he can hit that. Not only is he dangerous, he's dangerous with both hands. That was a right-hand jumper. Three-point lead for the Nighthawks, the sixth seed of six teams here in the men's basketball tournament in the GNAC. Evans guarded by Murphy. Goes baseline. He's double teamed. Finds Paulson alone. Jumper short. Yeah, you could see that when it left his hands. That was going to come up short. Murphy that time gave Evans the baseline if he wanted it. Evans didn't want it, however. 4.45 left in the season for one of these teams. And a foul on the Falcons. Now we've got four more games today <laughs> that are going to be, or I should say, yeah, absolutely, three more games today. Here's Murphy. Watch the left-hand hook. And then here's Murphy going with the right-hand jumper. We have three more games here today. And, again, I expect all three to be equally as tight as this one. I really do. I think this is going to be maybe one of the, especially through the, uh, the quarterfinal round, is going to be one of the most competitive that we have seen. No reason to think otherwise. All these teams are decent to good, if not better than good. Yeah. 
and your season's on the line. Yeah. Do you want to go home? Most likely not. Do you want a chance to punch your ticket to the NCAA tournament? Who wouldn't? Evans checks out for Seattle Pacific. Whitman back in. Here's a good look at Bergeson at the free throw line. Ryzen. Five-point lead for NNU, their largest of the afternoon. A good time for it, just 4.37 left. Can the Falcons answer? Paulson outside. Blackman thought about the three instead. Couple dribbles, jumper short. And just like his free throw, just came up a little bit short. Front rimmed it. Grant Leap encouraging the Falcon defense. Allen guarded by Blackman to Biggie. Right back to Allen off the screen. Allen going to the rack. Good ball movement. Ten Clay was open. Decides to drop. Oh, my. Back, and he flushes it down. Tim Ten Clay. Oh, my. You want to talk about rising to the occasion. Ryzen Bergeson or Ten Clay getting it uh, down with authority. Man, Ten Clay's got game. Seattle Pacific to answer the miss. Rebound to the Nighthawks. They're up seven and in control with 337 left. Last year they were the upper seed of the opponents that were on the floor. This year they were the lower seed. And they're trying to put on the glass slipper. Biggie feeling it. Drops the three. NNU up 10, yeah. and Grant Leap has seen enough. A 25 point swing in this game. From Seattle Pacific up by 15 to Northwest Nazarene by 10. And there's 10 Clay. K Kapow. That's all I can say on that. Tim, 10 Clay and the Nighthawks doing good things in the second half. They're up 10, 315 left. Can SPU respond? Back after this on GNAC.TV. I'd like to do that just once. Biggie, good dribbles, good shot, 10-point lead for NNU. The Nighthawks exploding. What a tale of two halves. Well, it, it, it is, and it's a tale of two halves in terms of offense, too, from Shaw Anderson. A lot of offense in the first half, leading Seattle Pacific to a 10-point halftime lead. Second half, I'll tell you, the NNU defense, which, again, led the league in terms of points allowed this year. Uh, they have just turned that defensive intensity, which they showed at the beginning, up another notch. There is Bergeson once again, who hit that big three a moment ago. But again, NNU wasn't the best scoring team. Matter of fact, on the year, they only averaged 66 points. 10 Clay hit with the foul. But they only gave up 66 points. And right now, you know what? They're right on that kind of pace with Seattle Pacific. Anderson to the free throw line and very important free throws for yeah. Seattle Pacific because one, time is not on their side, so the clock's not moving, and two, they need points. Well, they got one right there. Anderson with 22 on the afternoon. Z checks out. But that's, that's a tale of two halves, 16 first half, six in the second half. And, and Northwest Nazarene has just been done a much better job keeping the ball out of his hands in the second half. Not that he hasn't been trying to get the ball, but boy, I tell you, the defense on him has been intense. And that's with a capital I. Robert, what kind of hit do you think this will be for Seattle Pacific? They're ranked eighth in the West region. 
Well, they need to win to make sure they get into the West region. They lose here. I, I think their season is, uh, is complete. Sense of urgency ramping up for Seattle Pacific. Is it too little, too late? Oh, I don't think so. Allen picks up the dribble to Murphy, and there's a turnover. Yeah. Another turnover, a bad pass by Baker McCann. Yeah. That was a, that was a needed offensive possession there for Seattle Pacific. Inside two and a half left. Nighthawks look to advance to tomorrow. Biggie to Murphy. Murphy spins baseline. He's under the basket. Right hand off glass. Ten point game. Yeah, he has been the key in the second half has Murphy. He's hit the big shot after big shot and maybe none bigger than that one. Paulson strong in front of the cup. 73-65 NNU inside two minutes. And a foul. Gabriel Murphy, 17, leading the way for NNU. Eight of 10 shooting, 80%. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're not going to beat that much. And here he is on the inside, goes underneath and scores a reverse. Where was the help? Well, not clearly wasn't there. Not there. Murphy in the first half only had two points. So he's had the big half with 15 here in number two. And even though we have free throws coming here, uh, this gives Seattle Pacific a little bit of a blow. And players on the floor right now, including Paulson and uh, Anderson, who are among the top three. Anderson number one, Paulson number three, in terms of minutes played per game this year for SPU and uh, the, the GNAC, leading the GNAC in that regard. Not sure why there's a pause in the action at the moment. I think it's an issue with subs. Jalen Fox in now for NNU. As True Allen goes to the free throw line. I misspoke. Paulson number two, not number three in minutes played this year for the GNAC. Allen misses to the delight of SPU Falcons and their fans. They are down by eight with the basketball. Time ticking away. A minute 41 left. A three out of the corner. Short rebound to True Allen. And he is fouled, and he'll go back to the line with a minute 37 left. Well, that was a good look. I wasn't sure the Seattle Pacific was going to go for a three right there. They decided to. They got a pretty good look, but uh, it just came up just a little short. Allen got the rebound, and Seattle Pacific fouled immediately. Allen, 11 points on the afternoon on four of nine shooting. He is Two of five from the line, not a good Yeah, not percentage. a good afternoon. And again, Seattle Pacific not a particularly, or I should say Northwest Nazarene, not a particularly s solid free throw shooting team on the year. Robert Lowry will have an interview with the victorious head coach right now. Just a 64.7% team on the season. And well, there we see it again, Allen misses and gives Seattle Pacific a little life. Anderson in the lane all alone for the dunk. A minute 29 remaining in this one. NNU 74, SPU 67. Back after, I guess we'll hang out right here. Full timeout. So we've got a moment to talk about. Well, the next game, Central Washington against Western Oregon. This, as we mentioned, was a rubber match, and you can see there is Shaw Anderson elevating and putting it down on that last uh, basket by Seattle Pacific before the timeout. We talked about this game being a rubber match. That was going to be a rubber match, too. Western Oregon and Central Washington split their season series, and both of those games came down to a lay-in in the first game, a three-point shot in the second game for the victories. So we're going to have another one that's a, a flip 
call it, toss them, you know, or toss up between those two squads. So there's nothing to, to indicate to me that that game is going to be any less of a, uh, of a, of a dogfight than the one we're seeing on the floor right now. And again, it's, it, it, those, those kind of matchups are what basketball fans love to see in a march. They love to see this kind of action where uh, we're solid teams that are equally matched get to, to play with the opportunity to move on to a potential West region. I mean, we've got a nice crowd here at Western Washington's Carver Gymnasium today. Uh, and they're enjoying this basketball without question. 90 seconds left in one of these teams seasons right now. SPU on the outside looking in. NNU with the ball and the lead 74-67. Grant Leap wanted a travel, didn't get it. So the Falcons had to foul. Paulson and Z set the check back in for Seattle Pacific. Well, there's nobody on. Ten Clay is the guy you don't want to foul. He's a 79% free throw shooter, and he's the best on the NNU team. Uh, I, as I say that, do I <laughs> jinx the? Was that Ten Clay? Yeah. No, it's no, uh, Burgess. Biggie. Yep. It's Bergeson. Now, he's, he's pretty solid, too. It's 76.7% from the free throw line this year, but he hasn't shot a ton. He only shot 43 coming into the tournament. Biggie hits the second free throw. Eight-point lead for the Nighthawks. Falcons have the ball. Just a minute 10 to get back in this one. Driving, looking for the and one, and getting it is Z. Exactly what NNU did not want to have happen. Well, I think Paul right, and here is the drive right there. Allen giving him the, yeah, there's no question. There's the body. At that point, if you're true, Allen, the play should have been back off, let him score the two. That doesn't hurt you as much as the and one situation. Because right now it's a two-possession game. It'll still remain a two-possession game, but that opportunity for Z to get the three-point play to cut it to five and allows you as well to set up the, the defense you want here. Otherwise, you could take it out, try to advance up floor right away, but right now, the press is going to be set by Seattle Pacific. Falcons assistant coach Kefri Fazio reminding his team they have no timeouts. Biggie is fouled again, so he will head to the free throw line as the Nighthawks are up five with a minute three left. Well, make it a free throw shooting game. I think elongate the game as much as you can. I think Grant Leap is making the, uh, the obvious call here. Make the, the team that was 10th in the GNAC beach at the free throw line. And right now, well, they're able to do so at least on the front end of the two-shot opportunity. Big, big free throw for Biggie right here. Yeah, this yeah. will make it a three-possession game if he hits it. A hush over Carver Jim and Seattle Pacific only down six. Final minute of one of these teams' season. Paulson outside to Z, time ticking away. They haven't gone for a three yet. 15 to shoot, and there is a oh. foul looking for the another and one. Z cannot get it to fall, but he will go to the line with 48 seconds left. I tell you, that was a, a whisker away from being a three, as you can see, an up and under. And that was more of a, that was almost a Rick Berry shot from back exactly in the 1960s, underhand shot off the window. Rick Berry, of course, tremendous free throw shooter using that, uh, that underhand style that's gone the way of the, uh, the dinosaur, actually. Does anybody shoot underhand anymore? Have you seen one person in the last 40 years do that? No, you can't. You, no. Because nobody does. Five-point lead for the Nighthawks. 
Nighthawks also have three timeouts left, which is a huge advantage at this point. Z hits them both. Four-point game. Can the Nighthawks hang on? You, you jump with the you, right now. You jump on them with the press. They get one pass. If you don't steal, you foul. You don't let them get two or three passes. And they let their best shooter that you talked about, Ten Clay, take the inbound. Yeah. Z, Paulson, and Rouse getting set to check back in. Yeah, I think at this point you, you can't, if you don't get a, a quick steal, I think you better foul quick at this point. Ten Clay, free throw, good. And both teams doing offense for defense and defense for offense substitutions at this point. Tim Tenclay, a game to be proud of, 14 points. Oh, yeah. Four and of five shooting, three of four <laughs> from downtown, three of four from the free throw line. And the most impressive dunk of the tournament so far. <laughs> and we'll see more. I think now Seattle Pacific may need a three. Back to a six-point lead. Shaw Anderson, he is tripped up and fouled. Well, there's no question about the foul against Northwest and Nazarene. But Shaw Anderson going to go to the free throw line. That foul against Yeru Harvey. And free throws here, again, allows Seattle Pacific to get that defense set. Twenty-eight points for Shaw Anderson. Well, it's uh, it's been an up and down game for him. He was shut down for much of the second half, but all of a sudden, in the latter stages, he started to to again become part of the offense. Basically, uh, willing himself back into the offense against double teams more than once. Twenty-nine points for Anderson. Hoping that's not his final points, as his team needs at least four more. Trap wow. in the corner. And Biggie that's breaks away. That's not what you wanted. Breaks the press, layup good, back to a six point lead for the Nighthawks. Anderson, three, no, offensive rebound. Blackman throws it nearly to us, but it's saved. And a three on the way. Left-hander not even close by Baker McCann. And that will just about do it with 14.3 yeah. remaining. I, I thought that was coming right into our lap, that pass. You were ready. No. No? I was ready to watch it go out of bounds. And then you with the ball up six. Wow. What a second half for the Nighthawks. And again, that's the reason. The timeouts late in the game are so important. Couldn't get the ball in, NNU. They have the timeout. They get another opportunity. And this is today nothing away for Seattle Pacific. They have played their hearts out here today. I have been so impressed by their hustle. You can see here is the long down for Plast to Bergeson, who uh, cherry picking down floor, is able to score and maybe put the final points on the board for the win today for Northwest and Nazarene. I'm still blown away at the second half for the Nighthawks. It's been very, very impressive. Their defense leading the conference in defense this year in terms of points allowed. Uh, they get after you defensively. They're a hard-nosed, they're a scrappy team, and I think they're a reflection of the attitude and the, the uh, personality of their coach, Paul Rush. Paul Rush, very intense coach, good coach, and... Uh, well, he's got his team on the precipice of a victory. 14.3 left. Biggie has it. Nice job by the Nighthawks to break the press, and Allen is fouled. Used up five seconds yeah. on the clock. Time is on the side of the Nighthawks. And again, it's tough when they're moving the ball as well as the Nighthawks are, but...
Again, when you need points, you need to make that foul as quick as possible. And the Nighthawks have done a nice job moving the ball against that press. Robert, we talked about how well both teams were shooting in the first half. SPU just shooting so much better. It's been the complete opposite for the second half. Yeah. 32% the Falcons have shot here in the second half. Nighthawks, 48 points this half alone. Yeah. Well, the Nighthawks on the night, 50 Five, well, almost 56% from the field. Allen puts the cherry on top, 82-74. Final five seconds for this game, number one of the GNAC championships. A minor upset as NNU moves on. They advance, Seattle Pacific, their season comes to an end. And we're going to have an opportunity to talk to Paul Rush here in just a couple of moments. Robert Lowry will be interviewing Paul Rush courtside momentarily after the Nighthawks advance. They win it 82 to 74. 29 points from the Falcons' Shaw Anderson. Doesn't go for naught, but they lose even with his 29 point effort. A great job in the second half by the Nighthawks. 49 points just in the second half alone. They shot 58% in the second half and they advance to take on Montana State Billings tomorrow at noon. So we'll go ahead and get it over to Robert Lowry who's with head coach Paul Rush. We're with eighth year NNU head coach Paul Rush. Victoria is here at the tournament with the victory over Seattle Pacific. Coach, you were down by 15 in the first half, down by 10 at half. What did you tell your halftime? Uh, what did you tell your team at halftime? And what turned it around in the second half? I think their energy turned it around in the second half. You know, our guys are, are so uh, tough, and, and they showed that mental toughness in the second half, the way they responded, fought through adversity. Um, we told them at halftime, don't, don't spend the next 20 minutes turning the ball over 10 times and giving up two boards and um, leave it all on the floor and, and do it for God's glory, and that's, that's what they did. Gabriel Murphy is somebody who really turned it on in the second half. Was that by design? Gabe is, Gabe is the energy guy, and so he, he really focused on his energy in the second half, and, and he's a great player. He, had, he was an AFib last week, and he did, hadn't practiced for days on end and got cleared um, earlier this week, and so he was just excited to be out here playing basketball, excited to play one more game at least. Is it fair to say that the Nighthawks' off offense is a lot generated by the defense? Yeah, our, our defense is where we start. That's what we hang our hat on. It's what we focus on. We always say we breathe, bleed, and live defense. And so we generate a lot of that on the defensive end. We always want our energy to be from the defensive end. Um, and then on the offensive end, we like going through Gabe and True and Biggie. Those are our guys. And they came up big today. Coach Rush, thank you for joining us here. Thank and you. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Appreciate it. Back to you, Sean. Thank you, Robert. Paul Rush and the Nighthawks victorious in game number one. The six seed, the mild upset over the three seed, 82-74 Nighthawks. And Paul Rush heading back to his team in the locker room. They will enjoy this one tonight, but, man, they don't have a lot of time to enjoy it because they've got Montana State Billings tomorrow. that will be game number one on Friday. That is noon Pacific, and then you will take on Montana State. Final thoughts, Robert? Just an impressive win by Northwest Nazarene. Uh, there's no question about it. To, to, uh, to hold a, a team like Seattle Pacific to 30% uh, shooting in the second half, that says all, it need, all you need to say because Seattle Pacific was a team that averaged better than 50% from the field as a team on the year. 20% below their season average in the second half. That's what turned the game. Defense turned the game in Northwest Nazarene's favor. And Well, sometimes a good defense beats good offense, and that's what happened today. Northwest Nazarene advances. They play tomorrow at noon against Montana State Billings with the 82-74 victory over Seattle Pacific. For Robert Lowry, Ron, John, Shelley, Mike, Carla, that's everybody here on GNAC.TV. Thank you so much for tuning in.
Give us about 25 minutes and we'll get game number two rolling and that will be Central Washington and Western Oregon coming up in about 20, 25 minutes. Thank you for watching. Northwest Nazarene advances and they'll play again tomorrow.